Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Man killed, woman injured by a gunman in Manchester. A man was shot dead and a woman shot and injured by a gunman in Belrito near Richmond in Manchester on Thursday night. Police named the deceased as Alfredo Ferguson, 42, otherwise called Six. Residents said Ferguson was a construction worker who also went by the alias Blacks. A police report said about 8.45 p.m., Ferguson and the woman were having a conversation in the yard when gunmen attacked them and opened fire. They reported they ran in separate directions. Ferguson collapsed on a dirt truck. The two injured people were taken to hospital, where Ferguson was pronounced dead and the woman treated for a gunshot wound to her hand. Police statistics show that up to June 24, Manchester recorded 23 murders since the start of this year, when compared to 20 for the corresponding period last year. Stakeholders relieved following killing of Clarendon wanted man, stated police. The police in Clarendon say stakeholders are breathing a sigh of relief after one of the parish's most wanted criminal, 19-year-old Romain Murray, otherwise called John Tom, was killed in a shootout with cops on Thursday. Murray was cut down in Greenwood, St. James. Murray, who headed Clarendon's most notorious list, is said to have been vicious in his demeanor and have been wreaking havoc across the parish for some time. The police say he was responsible for quite a few murders, but has managed to elude capture. According to Senior Superintendent Carlos Russell, head of the Clarendon Police Division, he said that his team ventured into St. James to apprehend the young killer. He said Murray was cornered near a shop where he challenged the security team and was killed. Right now, the parish is very happy and we have been seeing that as we have been talking to some people. It's just the immediate family who is mourning because no matter how bad a person is, there is still family you know, said Russell. According to Russell, despite being implicated in a number of murders across the parish, people have been reluctant in providing the police with information out of fear. They are afraid of him. People will say, it's him, we saw, but when you ask for statements, they say no, Minaga no court, Minaga give no statement, was to explain, asserting too, that Murray had been present in his attacks. Murray was recently featured on the Jamaica Constabulary Wanted Wednesday campaign. Murray was responsible for the murders of a prominent businessman and a vendor in the parish recently. Teen boy charged after gun found on roof. A teen boy was arrested and charged on Wednesday following the siege of an illegal gun and ammunition on Smith Lane in Kingston. He is charged with possession of a prohibited weapon and unauthorized possession of ammunition. The Central Police report that about 1 p.m., a team on an operation carried out a search at the premises where a Beretta 9mm pistol and a magazine containing eight 9mm cartridges were found on the roof. The teen was held in connection with the seizure. The teen is said to appear before the Kingston and St. Andrew Family Court on Thursday, July 6. Manchester Police concern about increase in major crime incidents linked to domestic violence. The Manchester Police have expressed concern about an increase in major crime incidents such as murder linked to domestic violence. Territorial Officer for the Division, Deputy Superintendent Colin Johnson, said of the 23 murders recorded since the start of the year, five are domestic related. He said, despite the domestic violence numbers, overall, there is a 28% reduction in serious crimes in the parish. DSP Johnson said several migrant criminals, including a 17-year-old, have been charged for breaking and robberies. DSP Johnson was speaking at a domestic violence forum at Mandeville Baptist Church on Wednesday. Manchester since the start of the year, we have seen uh, 23 murders in comparison to 22 for 22. Now for 23, those 23 murders that have been recorded, five of those murders emanate out of domestic violence. Uh, the most recent is one of our colleagues, uh, Constable Raymond Blair, who was murdered a few weeks ago, and um, his body will be laid to rest on the 15th of July. The old have been tested in church and then um, to be tested for the farm. But there are some crimes that I want to, that are in the media, and I want to tell you about them. In, on the 13th of April, we have a robbery at the Cameo in Mandeville, where over $8 million were robbed. We have one person that was arrested and charged. She is Carlos Williams, otherwise called Janine, out of Spanish Town. 
He has been charged for robbery with aggravation. We also have um, several breakings and robberies of poker box. And the most recent were on the 8th of this month, the 8th of June 2023, where several poker box were stolen in Christian and Pinegrass. And so we have three persons that were caught. There's a swift action by the police. We were caught in, 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 um, in Poros. There's a 17 year old who was charged with Andre, Andre, 33 years old, and a Dimitri God, 20 years old. All these three persons um, reside in Kingston. And so they were arrested and charged, and now before the mandate of um, Parish Court. No charge, no jail. More than three years after its first promised legislation to end the frequently condemning practice of children deemed uncontrollable being sent to penal institutions, the Andrew Holness administration has finally acted. Minister of Education and Youth Favour Williams on Tuesday tabled a bill in the House of Representatives titled An Act to Further Amend the Child Care and Protection Act CCPA almost three years to date after she made a statement in Parliament that the legislation was being fast-tracked. In a statement to the House at this time, Williams said, following the amendment of the CCPA, no child not charged with an offence would end up in a correctional facility. Fast forward three years and Williams used a post-cabinet media briefing on Wednesday to repeat the claim as she declared that the debate of the amendment would begin when the House of Representatives sits next Tuesday. Williams noted that the amended legislation will repeal Section 24 of the CCPA, which gives the court the power to make a correctional order for children brought before it by a parent or guardian who feels the child is uncontrollable. As soon as the law is passed, it will stop using the term uncontrollable and instead use the term behavioral issues and make provisions for the orders that may be made by the court in respect of such a child to include a residential therapeutic order or non-residential therapeutic order having regard to the results of a social inquiry report and a psychological or psychiatric report stated Williams. She told the media briefing that with the amendment, any child who is taken before a court other than a child alleged to have committed an offence should be placed under the care of a children's officer for a specific period not exceeding three years instead of a probation and aftercare officer as currently obtained under Section 24 of the CCPA. That repeal of Section 24.2 will also enable Jamaica to become compliant with its obligations under notable international treaties on child justice and child rights and establish a fairer and more equitable means of treating with cases involving children exhibiting behavioural challenges. Jamaica is signalling its commitment to promoting the best interests of the child, declared Williams. At present, Section 24 of the CCPA indicates that in a case where a parent or guardian proves to the court that he or she is unable to control his child, the court can make an order which could, among other things, result in the child being sent to a correctional centre. That provision was rejected by then Minister without portfolio in the Ministry of National Security, Senator Matthias Samoda, who, in February 2021, told the Upper House that arrangements were being made to separate children deemed uncontrollable from those who have criminal charges or convicted. At that time, Samoda said there were 26 juveniles deemed uncontrollable who were in custody at the Department of Correctional Services. A correctional facility is simply not set up to deal with the nuisance issues facing juveniles deemed uncontrollable. In fact, our correctional officers are simply not trained to manage them and provide the necessary psychosocial support for those deemed uncontrollable. They are trained to manage those on remand or those convicted of criminal offences, said Samuda at the time. This discretion must be removed. Quite frankly, we have spoken about it for long and it is indeed time to act, stated Samuda in what was believed to be a reference the submission to Parliament made by Children's Advocate Diana Garden Harrison in March 2013. In that report, Garden Harrison noted that the concept of a child who is said to be beyond control essentially relates to a child who exhibits behavioural problem and or maladaptive behaviour. She added there is a need for a facility that can accommodate those children who exhibited maladaptive behaviour patterns and who need special services care towards addressing the underlying causes that lead to those behavioural problems. The government is scheduled to officially open a non-residential therapeutic centre as recommended by Gard Harrison in 2013 at the Maxville Park Children's Home in St. Andrew. Please remember to subscribe, like, share and click